common thing chemical engineers need to find in practice is the diffusivity of certain components in uh, other species. So in this case, uh, one example would be how does a liquid called A diffuse into a gas called B? It's a generic example. To do that, chemical engineers use something called Arnold cells. An Arnold cell is a pretty simple setup. It just involves having a uh, standard kind of cylindrical glass tube and at the bottom of it we have pure liquid A. And in this setup we have a fan blowing a pure stream uh, fluid gas B over the top of the Arnold cell and inside the Arnold cell we have diffusion of the liquid A into the gas B. And so the key parameters that we are interested in here are uh, the concentration, the molar ratio of A at the top called Y2 and the mole fraction of A at the interface between the gas B and liquid A and that is called Y1. Z2 corresponds to the um, t Z value so we're going to define a coordinate system with Z going down and we can have X and Y going in uh, the other dimensions but they're irrelevant in this example. Um, in this case Z2 corresponds to the top of the tube and Z1 corresponds to the interface level beneath the top of the tube. Y1 we can approximate using uh, vapor pressure of A which we would know beforehand divided by the total pressure which we can usually assume is one atmosphere if this thing is exposed to uh, standard conditions. And one thing to import that is important to note is that diffusion is not evaporation we we're not heating anything up here. This is simply uh, one of the key themes themes in mass transfer is the movement of particles or species uh, via mass transfer because of a driving force. And in this case, the driving force is a difference in concentration, a concentration gradient between uh, being pure A and being zero concentration of A here. So we will have A diffusing into the gas B because of that. So if we plotted a concentration profile like this, we would see that if we looked at the partial pressure of A at the position Z1, we would have a higher value than we do at position Z2 at the top of the tube. Consequently, A will move down the concentration gradient, which means it's moving up the Arnold cell into the gas B. And uh, so it's important to note that the concentration Y1 will always be greater than Y2. If this wasn't the case, we would have no diffusion and we wouldn't be able to measure anything. The ultimate goal of this is to determine the diffusivity value uh, of A into B. So to start out, to do that, we are going to start with making some assumptions and then diving into a mole balance. The assumptions we can make in a typical Arnold cell are that it's operating at steady state. And this is a little confusing at first because this position Z1 is actually a function of time. It moves very slowly down because we have A diffusing into B. The mass and the volume of A in this uh, region here are slowly being reduced over time, but it is not evaporation, it is diffusion. Um, it is changing slowly enough that we can, as chemical engineers, make a kind of pseudo steady state approximation and claim that uh, the, the, the main reason we claim it's steady state is for simplifying our mole balance later on. So just take this assumption at first and then we'll see why it becomes important later. Uh, the next important assumption we make is that the concentration of A at the interface at Y1 and the concentration of A at uh, the top of the tube Y2 are constants for all time. And we also assume that the gas B is stagnant inside this uh, 
uh, Arnold cell. And that is a very important assumption to make for our mole balance later on as well. So getting into our mole balance, generic mole balance we can always make in our mass transfer problems and almost any problem in chemical engineering is that the gradient or the, uh, of the flux, which is called Na, plus dCa dt is equal to Ra, the rate of reaction of A. And this is all within our control volume. So our control volume in this case is only the inside of the Arnold cell. We're not interested in outside or this pure liquid A here. The assumptions we can make here is that we can uh, cancel out our dCa dt term, set it to zero because we can assume that inside this control volume, the concentration of A remains constant over time for short durations of time as long as we don't let it run too long. And the next uh, thing we can cancel out is uh, our rate of reaction of A because we can say that there's no reaction occurring. Consequently, we can cancel that term out of our mole balance as well. We end up finding that the uh, gradient of Na, the flux of A, must be equal to zero. So the next step is to analyze what the flux of A really is. And generically, the flux of A is equal to the diffusivity, which is what we want to calculate, times C, the total concentration of all species present in our control volume. So you would, to calculate C, you would sum up the number of moles of every species you have present, and then divide that by the total volume in your control volume, times the gradient of YA. So this is the uh, concentration profile of YA, which would be proportional to the partial pressure of A within your control volume uh, along the Z direction. And in addition to this, our flux of A is also has a convective uh, component to it as well, which is the mole fraction of A times the molar flux of A plus the molar flux of B. So up here, in our, our, one of our assumptions was to say that B is a stagnant fluid within this Arnold cell. What that lets us do is it lets us cancel that out, because, uh, which makes uh, our calculations easier. Uh, another thing we can do, so that the gradient of YA is equal to dYA dx plus dYA dz plus dYA dy, and we can cancel out the x and y components because we are saying that ya is only only has a profile in the z direction. So what does that mean? It means if we defined our axis to be z upwards and then x that way and then y backwards, we are saying that if you travel in the x or y direction inside your control volume, there is no change in the concentration of A, so we don't need to worry about any of that other stuff. Another important thing to note when you are analyzing molar flux is this C term you see pretty often. Um, so if you multiply C by YA, you get CA. And then another thing would be if you had the total pressure and you multiplied that by the molar ratio of A, you would get the partial pressure of A. And so once we simplify our mole balance, or once we've simplified our mole balance and we've analyzed our molar flux, the next step is we can further analyze and simplify our equation to get closer to solving what the diffusivity coefficient is, diffusion coefficient. And so we cancel that out, and um, it's moving from this step to this step is just algebra. Um, we subtract NAY on both sides. That's where this 1 minus YA comes from. We have minus C, DAB, DY, A, DZ. So um, this is the pretty... So in examples in mass transport, when you do not have convective terms that are important, we can usually neglect this uh, part. And so when you see C, D, A, B, D, Y, A, D, Z, um, this is a pretty common form you see, but we cannot neglect convective uh, forces in Arnold cells because 
um, it's playing a role in the diffusion. And another important thing to note is so like if you if our concentration remains constant, which it does because we have no reaction present, we can incorporate and use this rule CYA is equal to CA and sometimes you also see minus DAB DCA DZ uh, written as NAZ. But again, it's very important to start from the design equations and work your way through this because you don't know what assumptions you can make along each step of the way. The next step is to integrate this function from Z1 to Z2 with respect to Z and from Y1 to Y2 with respect to YA. And we end up finding for our Arnold cell in this example ends up being this equation. And DAB is right here, which is what we want to solve for. Z2 minus Z1 is the height of the uh, control volume that we are interested in. And uh, we've gone over what YA1 and YA2 were. So you can measure these pretty easily. And if we do a dimensional analysis on what molar flux is, if we recall the definition, molar flux is defined as the moles of A divided by area times time. So if we multiply the molar flux of A in the Z direction by area times the molecular weight of A and then divide that by the density of component A, we will get units of volume per time. So moles per A per meter squared per second times meters squared times grams per mole of A. You can analyze these units on your own time, but you'll see that it cancels out nicely and we're left with meters cubed per second. And so this volume component, volume uh, per time component, uh, we can now analyze what happens over time. So this is the point where we will take into account the change in height of the Arnold cell control volume. Um, it will be a little bit. It's slowly diffusing in, and delta Z could be just a few millimeters or centimeter. So um, we would multiply our delta Z value by the delta T value. So you would make one mark at T equals zero of where your meniscus is, and then at T2 you would make the second mark, and then you would have your delta Z value. You would uh, divide that by the change in time that occurred, and then you would multiply that by the area of the base times the height change, which would be delta Z. So pi r squared, where r is the radius of this uh, Arnold cell. And this gives you also units of volume per time. So the volume change in A that occurred during your experiment will have to equal all of this stuff. And from there, it's more dimensional analysis and uh, algebra to arrive at what the final value of DAB should be and if you are wondering what value of Z1 to use here it is not too important because if we make the assumption that Z1 changes very slowly over time um, if you used Z at T1 or Z at T2 it'll still be okay um, although you can time average it and that might improve your uh, approximation as well, but it shouldn't make too big of a difference. Um, and this tells you what DAB is. And yeah, I hope you guys find this helpful. And let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.